Here's a Fidel 1994. It has currently a Dash 2 system. We're going to be removing this Dash 2 system and upgrading it with a CalMotion 527F control. And I'm going to show you uh, how easy that is to do. And uh, so I'll turn off the machine and show you how it works. The removal of the Dash 2 system is very easy. Pull out all the cards, insert the 527 in its place, use the same Fidel wiring to hook up the DC motors and feedback. We're also going to put the color-coded high-speed digital bus for the new control here. The green screen was upgraded to a VGA screen for the 527 on this machine. So here's the CalMotion uh, 527F control installed in this uh, 1984 machine and it's pretty simple to do. Um, what's really nice about uh, this new control is uh, the many peripherals it has. It has USB, Ethernet, um, 8 gigabytes of uh, memory and you can edit 500 megabytes of files. Um, it has also a high-speed uh, bus that it communicates over here. Everything's color-coded. Uses a lot of the Fidel existing wiring. In this case, we are hooked up to a DC Fidel machine. Um, these cards also are AC cards, so it's either DC or AC. And it uh, uses a lot of the existing Fidel peripheral cards. Um, but the axis control and the main control are all brand new and high-speed digital uh, control. And let's go take a look at the front. So here's the new control on the 1984 Fidel. Uh, let's get uh, it cold started. It's a DC machine. And we'll just do a test circle here. Do an example. I2 F350 G2. To set up the controls parameters, you would enter the set P command. From the set P, you can set your parameters as you need for your machine. You can select the screw that happens to be on the machine. You can enter your speed of the rapids. You can also um, enter in what type of feedback it happens to have. So this control will do either resolvers for DC machines or 5,000 line encoders on the L machines or the 8192 on the larger AC machines. So in the compatibility window, it's a very familiar interface. You use a space bar if you happen to be in the command menus. Um, you can scroll through each of the command menus. You can also enter the PA command if you wish to enter the editor. You can use your top and bottom commands, the up keys. If you want to edit a line, you would press C for change and edit it like you would expect. Um, change the G8 to a G9, change it back to a G8. Um, if you want to add a feed, you can add the feed to it. So it works in a very familiar interface and it will edit up to 500 megabyte files. The data is stored in an SD card 
that is also accessible over the network if you were to type the dir command it shows you a directory of that sd card's memory from your computer in your office you can view the same directory and add and, uh, or delete files from the directory and the, when you are out at the machine you would see the same exact thing so it's a real convenient way over the network to load files in and out of the control So to view the tool table, you would enter the DT command. That brings up your tool table. You can scroll through the tool table uh, like normal. You can do mass modifies if you wanted to modify tools 1 through 10, let's say, and uh, add the length, maybe one inch, to all those tools. You do that, and then they would all be updated. So if you push the space bar, uh, it then goes to the fixture offset table. Uh, than the macro variable table. You can get to these tables also by typing their uh, commands, df for fixture offsets, dv for variables. The control also has a USB feature. You can load files from a USB disk. You can also load things using the familiar RS-232. You would use your commands just as, as normal. You'd type CD, 10 to load the program from the, uh, set the baud rate, and then load it from the RS-232. So when you want to load a program into the control, you can load it into the control using the TA command. TA-05836 is what I'm going to load, TXT. So this is the same file you would see from your computer in your office. So when you do this, it loads, and now it's into the controls memory space, and it's based off of the O numbers. So if you were to display your program numbers, these are the programs that are in the controls memory. So if you were to be using uh, subprograms, then you can call these O words. Um, so it's a different space from the SD card that you would view from your office. This is actually the controls memory. So if you need to set a home, you can press the jog key, position the axis to your home position, and then use your set x command to zero either the x or the y, for the set y. Or uh, you can also use the set cs to restore your home back to the original cold start positions. It also has a set h command if you wanted to set the home for all the axes. The control will execute all the G codes, M codes, um, just like on a Fidel. You can enter the L subroutines, call those. You can also have your fixed cycles. Um, you can also call subprograms of the O words that happen to be in the memory. To get into the manual data input, you press the manual key. You can enter a move motion, and then when you press enter, it comes up in waiting mode. When you press start, it then executes that motion. So it's a very familiar interface um, and operates just as you expect. You can also enter the MD command if you want to get into the manual data also. So the control has the utility feature. You can enter the UT to go into the options. You can do tool settings. You can set up fixture offsets, your probes, your pallets, and clocks, etc. So if I wanted to set up a series of tools, one through three, let's say, you would enter it just like you normally would, jog to position, set the tools. And then it would then show up in your tool table.
So the jogging on the control is very familiar. Pressing the jog key, you then comes up with the jog screen. You can then select your axis that you wish to jog, or your high, medium, and low settings, and then use your hand wheel to position the axis where you want. When you're done with that, you can use the HO command, and it sends you back home.